So Omega talked about when he was hurt and when he came back last August. This was in uh, this was for the all out pay per view. Him and the Bucks against uh, the Death Triangle for the trios titles. Like this is when he's coming back. Quote: I didn't get it. I was like, what is with this strange atmosphere? What is with this strange yeah. aura? Why does something feel so ominous right now? I didn't know, and I couldn't figure it out. Next thing you knew, there was more stuff happening. So well, it was a as I see it, into. yeah, yeah, as I see it, he leaves his company, his, something that he helped build, and he comes back, and he looks around, and he's like, hmm, this doesn't, this doesn't seem the same to me. Okay, so now I'm not saying that these comments by Kenny, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I've interviewed him a few different times, and he is the most thoughtful person to speak. He doesn't just go off the cuff, right? He's very thoughtful. Yeah. He's thinking about what he's going to say. So I'm not saying this isn't strategic. He may be setting things up. He's a smart dude, like you said. He then says, stranger things started happening. Oh, man, what do I do? This isn't right. Someone needs to be the voice of reason. This is silly. So he is basically saying that, you know, what I left and what I came back to was not as good. It was not what we had built. It, it had changed and for the worse. Right. So you could you could take whatever that is supposed to mean. What it could mean is. You know, the political stuff changed. Yeah. Cody leaving, CM Punk coming in. There was there was possibly a change of what was going on. Who is on, you know, who who do, who's close to punk, which means maybe you're a little bit dis distance from other folks. So I'm I'm assuming, I don't know what that is, but that's sort of what I took out of that. And then he says, It's a shame the general public and a lot of people aren't ever going to know how it went down or how it could have been prevented or how it could have ended differently. I don't think anyone is happy that how it happened or is proud that it happened. I think across the board, everyone thinks this is a terrible situation that was unnecessary. So I want to get your thoughts on that quote, because that quote to me says we have distanced ourselves from that. We have thought about it and we realize how stupid it was, which yeah. is how most internal fights are, right? There's not, not a lot of thought put into why you get upset with somebody. So does that tell you that maybe the sides have got out of their emotions a little bit and are thinking about this a little bit differently? I think, I think that was always Kenny's stance. I, I don't think I, you know, from, from the backstage, I guess, you know, the, the, I mean, you heard stuff and I heard stuff and everybody heard stuff. Kenny was always kind of presented as like the voice of reason in this. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he was ever presented as, as you know, the aggressor in any way. Um, you know, it, it's tragic for sure. Cause they were on such a great hot roll and Kenny finally came back and things are getting ready to be, you know, firing on all cylinders. And this happens. I, I really hope for the sake of the story of AEW that they're able to make this into something. Mm -hmm. Because if not, if it doesn't turn into something and Punk, you know, they release him and he goes to Japan and does something or whatever, the story will always be that what if, right? This was the moment of AEW's demise. And that's that should not be the story for this company. It won't be the story for this company, but it also shouldn't, you know, five, ten years from now, if, you know, who knows what could happen. A lot could change, but... If Tony says F this and I don't want to be involved with wrestling anymore or whatever, the story will always be this. This is this is the, the bad moment. This is the Hogan politicking in WCW story. This is all of that in one. Um, you know, it's tragic. It's terrible. But I, I do agree with you. I think Kenny Kenny wants to make if the, it can work, it's going to work. But I don't know how the how the, how the Bucks feel. OK, two two you short know? quotes to, to finish this off and then we can move on. He, he said the fight or uh, this is what what Nason uh, wrote in quotes. The fight doesn't dictate what I do or what I say. I'm sure the Bucks are in the same boat. I can't speak to the other parties. Hopefully they're doing well. And I mean that. So. Again, I, Kenny I being him. super thoughtful, super caring, super voice of reason. It does seem that he is. He see okay. 
it seems that he may be open for doing something, right? Like he, it's, it, that that quote doesn't tell me f those guys, never doing business with them ever again. They ruined our great opportunity here. Yeah. No, and I don't think you should ever have that attitude because you having that mentality, then you you create that scenario more than anything else. You know, I listen, man, who knows? Maybe he won't ever go back to AEW because of what happened, but that doesn't mean that Kenny and him can't have this banger of a match in Japan. Yeah. We saw that I, I don't, I don't at know. that I New think, Japan I, show. I think Tony, Tony wants those on his pay-per-view buys, I think. Well, listen, I guess, I mean... Uh, the real forbidden door here is, is CM Punk <laughs> returning more than anything else. You know what you can do? You know, CM Punk could show up. What if he comes up with his title? He never lost that belt. Yeah. You know? And he comes in. They call it the international title. They could do something like they did in WCW. It'll be terrible. <laughs> you know? Have two titles and nobody knows the lineage of it. It'll be great. You know, you could, you could mess up your title lineage like that. I think in all seriousness, I... I feel that they will make this work. I don't know mm -hmm. when, but I just, there's too much money to be made by everybody in a contract year to not make it work. And there have been far worse fights and brawls, far worse public, you know, uh, you know, so much more publicly that happened in the 90s. Far, far worse stuff that never came to the public that happened in the 90s in these locker rooms that, you know, after a while, people made up and they were able to do business because at the end of the day, that's what matters. All right. This last quote. I I was trying to decipher what this actually meant. Maybe it means nothing. But Nason kind of just summarized what, what the last quote was and said that Kenny doesn't really have any goals or aspirations at this stage like he did in his younger days when he was motivated to win the G1 or the IWGP Who said or this? to have a match of the year. This is Kenny in, in the same interview. Okay. He said that made him question. So this lack of goals or aspirations that he currently has right now made him question his situation and wonders if he's being ungrateful or wasting his time. Now, that may tell us a little bit about his mindset, because to me, there are big goals out there for him, one of which could be be the biggest babyface champion in AEW. And, you know, the, let's keep this company, you know, moving up and to the right. The other goal could be go to WWE and become a giant star there. Like, I, I don't know. And take the title off of Cody. Yeah, take the title <laughs> off of Cody. Yeah. Now, now, the way that he said that, again, I, I'm just based, I'm taking it off of, uh, of Nason's summary. So I didn't actually hear the interview. But I, I wonder what, like, the, the lack of aspirations makes him wonder if he's being ungrateful or wasting his time. To me, it, I, I'm like, okay. Like, like you said in the beginning of this conversation, Kenny Omega with the trios titles, as fun as some elite fans may think it is, it is kind of a waste of Kenny Omega, right? It, yeah. What does Kenny Omega do best? Well, the trios thing is not utilizing him in the way that he is utilized best. So maybe it's like, yeah, I don't have any goals because I'm kind of just, you know, in, the, in these other programs, which are fun, but they're not really super juicy or super interesting or you know make make me uh really aspire to be the best or whatever whatever he's saying so i just i thought that interview was really fascinating uh whenever he speaks i pay attention because i think there's a lot yeah. of thought going into what he's going to say he's not just no, gonna say stuff to say stuff absolutely and you know for for one of the greatest pro wrestlers i mean him in japan he was remarkable you know seeing that kenny omega again was unbelievable to me uh, and this guy has it he could still do that but you know i i brought that up same exact point that you said on one of the other shows and the feedback i got was what do you want him to wrestle you know uh, a random match on dynamite it's better than him in the trios matches that matter for, you know that are these crazy off the wall matches i'm like yeah yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I would watch Kenny Omega and Joey Janela. I know Joey's not there, but I would watch. I would prefer to watch Kenny Omega and Joey Janela than to watch these trios matches. Okay, I, I, and it's not doing it for me. It's not only Kenny; it's also the Bucks, right? It's also the Bucks, yeah. And look at their tag division. Their tag division right now is a little, uh, as as um, 
What did what did he say? S A W S T sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little soft that that tag division right now. <laughs>